This is Startup Storefront. Approximately 20,000 businesses apply to be on Shark Tank each year. That means over all 14 seasons, they have received over a quarter million applications to be on the show. What's crazy is that only about 1,200 or 0.43% of the applicants make it on air. Some brands apply once, while some apply every year in the hopes of finally making it on the show. In today's episode, we chat with Mindy Zemrak, the casting producer for Shark Tank. Mindy and her team sort through all the applicants to decide what brands make the cut to be on the show. So if you've ever been curious about what it takes to make it on the Shark Tank floor, this is the episode for you. We discuss the most memorable Shark Tank pitch that left everyone in tears, why after years of being surrounded by entrepreneurs, she's never once tempted to take the plunge herself, and the four tips she tells every entrepreneur before they enter the tank. All right, welcome to the podcast. We're talking to Mindy from Casting from Shark Tank. Hi. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. People who don't know, what do you do? I am the supervising casting producer for Shark Tank. And you've been on it for how long? I've been on it since season one. Since season one, since the very beginning. Since the beginning. So you've seen a change. I've seen a change. I've seen entrepreneurship become accepted and mainstream and not looked down upon. I oh. have seen a world. Talk of about a that. Different... Th- was it looked down upon at the beginning? I-, I believe it was. I think way back when the show began, no one was really going out and doing their own thing. There were some, but I don't think it was as widely accepted as it has become. Yeah, you were kind of crazy, I guess, if you did that. Yeah, yeah. it was looked down yeah. upon. Um, and so That's I so think now it's, I mean, schools show Shark Tank to their students to yeah. teach them about business. There are college courses about entrepreneurship. There's majors in college in for entrepreneurship. Yes. And it's just wild to see when I started the show, I was much younger and now I'm I'm a little older. 16th and year. It's we're doing and we're in 15 right 15. now. Yeah. So it's been crazy. And it's been the original four sharks and now you guys do some guest sharks to give them a little vacation, right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> to give them a vacation. No. Is that why they do it? <laughs> no, they They're like I'm going to Italy this week. I can't <laughs> No, definitely not. No, I think that the the nice thing about Shark Tank is, you know, you want to keep the show moving and progressing and staying ahead of the game or staying on trend. And with that comes making sure you bring in sharks who spice things up, have different, you know, industries that they can speak to. Uh, I think the addition of Daniel Lubetsky and Emma Greed have, have changed the course of our show, you know, they're they're amazing additions, and we have some new ones coming this year. I can't tell you who, okay, but don't, they're, don't. they're good. That's awesome. They're good ones. At some point, so you guys review how many applications per year today? Each season, each year, we get approximately 20,000 applications to go through. And at what point do they meet you? At what point do, do they meet Mindy? Well, pre-COVID, they would meet me at an open call, and then the last three years, we have been grounded, as I like to say. We haven't been on the road at all. And this is the first year that we finally were allowed back out. So we are now scouting trade shows. I'm actually heading to Chicago next week for a trade show scout. And then we did our first open call in three years uh, back in March uh, here in L.A. And we'll be heading to Maryland in July. And so people only really meet me if I'm at an open call or at a trade show. Otherwise, if they apply online, they don't meet me. They talk to someone on our casting team. And they go through all of those rounds. And then if they make it all the way to filming, They'll they could see me Yeah, because uh, I'm running around set. Do you get harassed? Do people know who you are? They want to get like the, the, my DMs, the secret ingredient? My DMs blow up. I actually, when I was driving here, I was like <laughs> looking at my DMs. I'm like, oh my God, there's so many messages. So they wow. they definitely hit up the DMs quite Okay, a bit. so if you could tell people not to DM you, but usually they're probably asking you for advice. Yeah. What's the thing that you would want them to know? All, all these companies that are applying... Besides, like, get, have your shit in order, what would you tell them? <laughs> uh, we kind of have, like, three or four kind of, like, tips that we tell everyone. The first and foremost is be excited about what it is that you're pitching. You You have to tell this. people that? Oh, oh wow. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, hi, guys. I'm here with the new underwear well, <laughs> line. We always, you guys like my new underwear? So, yeah. <laughs> You so get, at our open <laughs> calls, I give them a whole spiel. It's not American Idol. The, the no, people that not. don't do well won't be showed on no, TV. No, and we encourage right. everyone to come out. It is a big step. Uh, a big step. Like you are kind of bearing your soul to some of these people. You joked before we started recording. This is your therapy session. Welcome. In some ways, <laughs> it is a therapy session because they are taking what they've been working on, probably you know, in the depths of their homes or wherever. And bringing out to a whole public display to and the judge, critique, and, and hopefully get investment. And so when they're coming to an open call, they're applying online. We tell everyone, we don't have money to invest in you. I have none. Yeah. And that's probably for the best. <laughs> and so 
if you make it further down, you'll get more serious. But right now, I just want to talk and get to know you because Shark Tank is 50% about your business or your product, but 50% about you and your backstory because everyone has a different backstory and a journey. And our show is about promoting that and celebrating it because the sharks could resonate with someone's story. And then also four, five, six million viewers could resonate and then want to support that, you know, entrepreneur or product. So the four tips okay. we give so is one back. is okay, okay. have, be excited about and passionate about it. Cause if you're not excited about it, how is anyone else supposed to get behind it and get excited about investing? The second thing is numbers. Now we know Mr. Wonderful will grill you till you are blue in the face about numbers. That's his thing. Yeah. But from our perspective, if you don't have numbers, if you're a prototype and you're a startup and you are pre-rev, that is okay. Just tell us how you're different and unique, which goes right into the third point of tell us how you're different and unique. These days, no one's really creating bread for the first time, but a lot of people or, you know, figuring out a wheel. <laughs> Brazi Bites is just done. They yeah. made cheesy bread. They're delicious too, let and me tell they're you. They're crushing. Okay. Um, but if you are different and unique or doing a new spin, tell us how that is different and unique from anyone else on the market or already out there. Um, and then the fourth thing is to just really hammer home why you need an investment. And we tell everyone, don't ask for all the money in the world. It's not money tank. Be strategic and you can always adjust your ask. Your ask is not set in stone until you're standing in front of those sharks and you're like, hi, my name is Mindy and I'm seeking blah, blah, blah at that point. But you want to make sure that you're not overvaluing your company because then they might look at you and say, I can't get behind it. And the rule of Shark Tank is you have to walk away with what you ask for or more. You can't all of a sudden halfway through be like, yeah, this isn't going so well. How about I reduce my ask? You have to walk away with that. So those are kind of the big four things that we tell everyone in the casting process. Really get out initially because we'll get it in a split second. What's the red flag? Like, what's the thing that most people can't cross over? Like, what's the hump? Let's say there's a hump and everyone gets to a point and then there's like junior year thermodynamics and half the school, <laughs> half the class is gone. What's the, what's the wipeout thing? There's not really any rounds or big hurdle or red flag to get through per se. It's just kind of you're in the process. Like we have 20,000 applications each year and our casting process starts in January and goes through the end of July. So it takes us months to get through everyone. And the network execs and everyone are constantly reviewing every application that comes in. And it's just really look, and the sharks don't not and cannot know anything about anyone before they go in the tank. And that's on purpose because we want to catch it on camera and get their genuine reactions if we bring in a naked man that they have to paint, which has happened. We did that once. That happened? Yeah. We brought in like a paint and sip company. Uh, and a naked man showed and up? And we, we brought in a man who disrobed. We strategically had a pineapple in front of things. <laughs> and Barbara was like, Barbara and Lori were shocked. And Cuban was like, what the heck? That is shocking. Um, so we always want to catch that on camera. I, they, I think they did. Yeah, I think they did. Once the guy removed the pineapple? Uh, you know, <laughs> what possibly. Happened? What's like the surprise? <laughs> We always say you're like you're in the process until you're either on the show or maybe you didn't make it past a certain point. So it's just kind of like hanging on and, and don't change anything for the sake of Shark Tank because it's such a small amount that get through. But we've had people that have applied 12 seasons in a row, nine seasons in a row, and then they finally get on. Oh, wow. So you just okay, never so keep, know. keep it going. That's yeah. interesting. What's a good backstory? Like in my head, I just went, I don't know why I did this, but in my head, I just went like emotional, like, mm -hmm. oh, I lost a fish when I was a kid. <laughs> and then I wanted to create a fish tank where, right. where the fish wouldn't die. Yes. And here's my product. Mm -hmm. Like that. I don't know why that went in my head, but what's a good back? So is I that a good backstory? It, if it's, it's emotional. If, if it's if it's emotional and and specific to you, that's a good backstory. <laughs> totally made it up, by the way. No, I I assumed. Um, <laughs> the thing about backstories is everyone automatically thinks, and I think there's a stigma that it has to be sad. It has to pull on your strings. It doesn't, because your journey is different from his, from hers, from mine, and that's what makes you special and unique. It's not. Let me tell you all the things now. We tell everyone when you're, you know, when you go in the tank or even way before, like at a casting call, if I want to get to know you and your company, I want to know also the hurdles that you've gone through. They don't have to be sad. It could be something like, I sold my house. Might be sad, maybe not. Maybe you did it for the sake and passion of your company. So everyone's different, but your backstory is really just about the journey you've been on to get here and maybe what you've had to give up or what you've encountered. And yeah, that's okay. what we like to shed light on. Do you guys help them on the rehearsal side of it in terms of like, so usually on TV anyway, we'll see the, there's like a beautiful setup, a beautiful yes. presentation. How much work goes into that from your side working with these brands? 
So I don't, we don't do much on the casting side of things. Once they're once they get through kind of the first couple rounds and they get to producer teams, we let the producer teams deal with them. They do rehearse and work on their pitch because t- timing wise, it has to be dialed in. And then they work with the art department in terms of this is what we'd like for our display. But there's also a matter of, you know, weight and dimensions. And we can't bring in, like, camel. Well, maybe we could bring in a camel. You never know. We've had other animals in there before. But, you know, certain size cars fit and whatnot. So there's a lot of back stuff and due diligence that we do on our end that no one sees because we have to do a lot of it. But there's I can't really go into too much detail. If there's a process in terms of, like, if they have a product, mm-hmm. do you try the product? Oh, yes. You do. Well, we have to try okay. everything. And if it's bad, you'll t- you'll tell them. I don't tell them. Everyone has their own. You but, know. But if it's bad, you, let's just say you have like a good. Like the paddle. sharks. No, no, no. Pre sharks. Pre sharks. Like during the application, maybe when they get accepted on the show. Do you try the products? We at try that point? everything. We have okay. to. We have to vet everyone because okay. we have to make sure that. So if, if your someone, product's not good, you're probably not going to make it on. Well, safe to say. It's it's all subjective. You may not like the drink. Of, a, of something you're trying, but I might. And, you know, everyone has a different palate, as you said. But if the product does not work a, a, after we vetted it, it might not be a good fit because then it's not really good to put a company on on national television when your product isn't working. So maybe we would wait until improvements have happened. <laughs> you, you know? Can you give me a story of a product that uh, didn't work? No, I cannot. <laughs> I'm under NDA. It's funny when, sometimes when you see Mark and he'll go into his, like, this is a scam. Yes, Mark gets very heated and passionate about supplement companies mostly, but in there are a lot of supplement companies, unfortunately, who have taken our likeness and scamming people. So please be aware of that. Of all this time working, who is what is your most memorable like moment during the casting? During the casting or during the show's run? Let's say during the casting, and then we'll do the show's run. So during... Actually, it's it's the same for okay. casting and for the run of the show. It was when I reached out to the young family of Cupboard Pro, uh, which Matt and all other four other sharks all invested in. And it was season 10. They all invested in this All company. five sharks invested on that panel that day. And when I emailed Kaylee, I knew about what her father had created. I saw an article uh, and her their father had passed away about a month to the day that I emailed her. And they lost their mother um, to, I believe it was breast cancer, a couple years prior. And they had just lost their father, who was a first responder at 9-11. And he passed away from 9-11 related illnesses. And so when I talked to Kaylee a month later, and then when they actually ended up coming out to film, it was Father's Day weekend, totally not planned. And then they got a deal. It was very like, okay, Keith, uh, we know you're looking down on them right now. And it was... You could hear a pin drop and every single person on that set was in tears because that's something that affected the entire country, but really affected this family. And those three kids were and are orphans, but they've really rallied together. And that was out of everyone, no offense to all the other entrepreneurs we've had on, that one was like, that one meant the most for sure. Did it make you think differently about the show and maybe its impact yeah. in terms of in term, like maybe following that trend and so less less venture capital, mm-hmm. more purpose, more mission driven? Yes, absolutely. And that's the thing that I think I love the most about Shark Tank is you see companies that sure come in and they're silicon startups or whatnot and they get that funding and everything. Yeah. But for me, it's about the entrepreneurs and what they've gone through and what they're currently going through to just hustle and really just put your nose to the ground and go, go, go. And they weren't giving up on their father's dream and it became a bigger thing. And just, you know, that's, to me, it's it's one of the pinnacle highlights of my casting career was meeting that family and then seeing how it all ended up down the road. And they've given back to that fire department, that firehouse, uh, you know, a lot of funding. And it's, it's, it's amazing. You can't make that up. Who's it's- your favorite guest shark? Do you like well, the transition there? I do. That well, now I feel like you want me to say Matt. We I miss Matt. Matt, Matt who? Matt Higgins. Matt Higgins. What a legend. I do love Matt Higgins. Thank I- you, Matt, for <laughs> introducing the both of us, by the way. No, Matt is great. Uh definitely miss him. But you know, all the shark all the guest sharks are very different. What is the vetting process for? I have for no them? clue. I'm not involved with that at I don't, all. Like sometimes when I watch, I'm like, I wonder if they actually make investments 
or if they're just here to sort of entertain, which is fine too. No, they the certainly make angle. investments. Like okay. the whole point of, and I, from what I know, and I'm not involved with the shark side of things, except for I film social media for the show when we're filming. But from a guest shark perspective, I am not involved. I'm only on the entrepreneur side, but I know that if they come in, they are absolutely ready to go and invest because they have that experience and they want to kind of, you know, open up their portfolio a bit more. Yeah. So, and it's all their money. It's no one else's. That's true. <laughs> That's one thing Matt said, actually. He said, like, it's very primal. Yes. He said, it's like, you watch them on TV and you're thinking they're just throwing jabs at each other. But the reality is it's like, they're really betting their money. Oh, yes. And in some cases, they're fighting for the entrepreneur to, like, pick them. Yeah. And that's hard. It is. And the, the judgment is also, like, what they've done. And maybe it's, it's and the entrepreneur is doing their own analysis of, like, do I even want this shark? Exactly. Maybe there's they have a reputation mm -hmm. or they're just not the right fit. But landing a deal maybe maybe gets me on TV. And so there's all this analysis happening in there's real time. Yeah. And it's like super primal yeah. in nature, which I think is like the coolest. I think that's for me, that's the coolest part of the show. There's like an anthropological part of me that just goes, oh, this is human nature. It's wild because a lot of entrepreneurs come out of the tank and then they're like, what happened? They black out. Oh, totally. They're like, what happened? Sure. I was in there for I was in there for two hours. And we were like, you were in there for 45 minutes. <laughs> And so, and it's funny because you, you mentioned Jim and Sabah, they blacked out after they came out there. Mindy, what happened? What and happened? I was like, let me fill you in. <laughs> you got a deal. <laughs> top five companies you remember you like the most? Or, or? Uh, so the, I can tell you the top five or six actually most successful companies thus far. Uh, so Scrub Daddy, obviously the one that everyone knows probably the most, I'd say at this point, but there's also the Books which is the flower company um, there. So Scrub Daddy, the Books, Bombas. I only wear Bombas socks. I will oh, tell you that. They're so good. They're that the was, best. They're I so missed good. that one. I, so I, was, I was late to the Bombas party. Oh, you can oh. join now. No, I am in it. I just mean like on the investment <laughs> side, I was, I, oh. it was like, I wish I had. <laughs> and then Everly Well is also a very successful company of ours. And they did a deal with Lori and then Love Pop Greeting Cards, which did a deal with Kevin. Um, and so those are kind of like the big top six the right now. The Comfy's not in there? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot the Comfy. Yes, yes, the Comfy, of course. And I have one of their original prototypes. <laughs> What's, how big is it, by the way? Is it like a blanket? Oh, they, it's were massive. Were they too big or too small, the original prototypes? They were perfect. Oh. Perfect. They That's came to down do. to like my shin and or just below my knee. And it's just like a warm, comfy hug that I just, I, I have one of the, actually, I have Mr. Wonderful's prototype that they gave him and then Red? I got it. No, it's gray. Oh, so it's perfect. It's perfect. I love Craig. Yeah. But yeah, it's such a fascinating. Yeah, we talked. Obviously, we were talking about this before, but when we had them on the podcast, I just thought it was crazy that they'd go on there with a prototype. No business, no sales. Well, they only had four prototypes. They didn't crazy. even have five. And there's five sharks on every panel. Mm, so they didn't have enough to one. hand out. They were wow. like, you can share this one, which kind of fits. The, I mean, that's what it is. That's yeah. the grind. Like, yeah. Yeah. Use what you have. Yep. But that story, I think that's just so brazen to go in a room asking for money with no. We sales. met them in Denver at a casting call and they had a whole jingle and everything. And I remember we, because well, we asked, as mentioned, we talk about, you know, we have to vet all the samples and we were, but we tell everyone, don't send us your prototype because that's your prototype and, and we don't send samples back. So, you know, because we have to vet it. So we were like, in this instance, can you just send us the prototype? We will send it back and let, thank you. Thank goodness they did because that ultimately helped, I think, help move them forward in the process was us putting it on and be like, oh, okay, yeah. we like this. <laughs> it's comfy. What is Mindy the human like in terms of like, so you meet entrepreneurs all the time who are yep. bringing you products. So is your house just full of all these things all the time? <laughs> no. Like we have a podcast. We get things shipped here <laughs> all the time. And at the beginning, it's cool. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of like overwhelmed. Like you only have so many friends you can give free stuff to. But what, what is it like for you? We have a whole office of samples of mail, and I don't like opening mail just because I hate packing peanuts with a passion. My casting team knows this. They'll play pranks on me and, like, post them up, stick them on the walls, and I, I, I hate packing peanuts. Anyways, but there's a ton of mail every single day for months and months and months. You know, we all work from home now still because of COVID. Not that it is a thing anymore, but we're just working from home. But we do have an office where everyone sends samples. So we just open up samples of mail every single day and then when I'm pitching companies to the executives that is when they start interacting with all the samples and products and everything and then if they move through the process then you know more people have to vet that product yeah. so it goes through a couple rounds and no I don't have a lot in my house I, I <laughs> like good. I'm a simple church and state yeah keep it separate when it comes to you seeing all these products you've probably seen everything ever invented or <laughs> like a version of something are you ever like I wish I would see this I wish someone would just invent 
Maybe maybe a, maybe a packing peanut that doesn't do the thing. That, I don't know. Let's I, I'm just, just get rid of packing peanuts. No. It, every year, I mean, we get a lot of stuff that you don't see that will never see the light of day on the show. And every year we see interesting items is what I'll say. Maybe not, you know, not safe for work type products and stuff like that. So it's never a dull moment. But every year I'm like, man, I've seen it all. And then the following year I'm like, well, I haven't seen that. So, yeah. so you know, ingenuity and everything is still well working out there, but it's it never never ceases to amaze me that after 15 years people are still coming up with amazing things and things that I'm like, okay, well, yeah, why, why didn't I think of that? But then sure. I'm like, I don't want to start a business, like the me company. personally. So that's another question. So you've been so close to it for so long where you're seeing these entrepreneurs, you're interviewing them, you're getting to know them really well. There hasn't been a single part of you that said, let me go, let me go do this? Never. You never got the bug? Nope. That's I amazing. like what I do. I meet a lot of amazing people. I obviously have fun doing my job. It but does seem like a fun job. I love it. It yeah. is one of the best because I- You also I'm, change people's lives in some way. Uh, so, some, yes. Right, some, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully everyone has a good experience going through the process, whether they make it on the show or not. And a lot of people say, I didn't make it on this year and they apply the next year and they're like, man, I learned so much or they made connections standing in line with someone at an open call. And, and so- there's all of that, but I don't want, there's a lot of hard work and I tip my hat to all entrepreneurs that do it. Some people have said I'm an entrepreneur in my own way and I, I kind of see it, but I also disagree. I just don't have any inkling at all to a, embark on a journey where I start a business. And I have a lot of friends that do, yeah. and it's just, it's just not for me, but I applaud everyone that tries and goes through because I know it is not easy after all the data though being so close to it do you think you could write like a like a how to land on shark tank book probably I, right you could be like I would, I would and it's hope probably so. mostly like don't do these things yeah I would hope so at this point I'd have to get a lot of approvals so I didn't yeah not <laughs> assuming you will but, but no I wouldn't but no I, I mean you know people are always like you repeat the same tips and I'm like but that's the honest truth like that's that's I'm not if there was a secret sauce yeah. I would tell everyone but it's yeah. just be yourself Tell us what sets you apart. Be excited and, you know, see what happens. The be exciting one's funny. I find that so fascinating. Because I'm like, <laughs> how, how would you not be excited? The potential of, of being on the show alone to well, me I is think, like... I think a lot of people are shy. And not everyone that comes on Shark Tank is going on to be on a television show per se. So I always try to and say, don't look at it as a television show. Look at it as you are going into a board meeting. It's just a little more fun. Not as laced up and, you know, rigid. Yeah. And so you can have fun. You can make fun of Mr. Wonderful's bald head or Mark's shark socks. You tell or people whatever. they can do that? Well, I don't tell them that, but I'm like, <laughs> but you see people make jabs at them for that all the time. I find that so interesting too. I'm like, why would you do that? <gasps> I mean, Mr. Wonderful likes it. It's good likes TV. It. He does? <laughs> he likes to get a, poked? Listen, he has a good time. He has a good time in there. Oh, He's intense, so but he has a good time. What are some of the things that you know that the, the average viewer doesn't know? Oh, I don't even know where to start. You'd have to ask like specifics. <laughs> like maybe, maybe... There's 20,000 companies that apply. 20,000 apply. Um, How many would you say you see or sit down Well, we with? look at every single application that comes through. Right. And then... And then from there, they vet down. We don't have set quotas. That's the nice thing. So we oh. just look at every single one. Uh, I think that's what surprises people. They're like, that, does, well, how, that is surprising. A lot of people at open calls, how many people are you taking from this? As many as I, it's not as like many an admission as we want. Class. No, in Got terms it. of making it to the next round, those that end up on the show depends on our episode order, which we just got renewed for 15 yesterday, officially. 15 episodes. No, season 15, season 15. officially. Okay. And then the episode order is TBD still. But usually we, we air anywhere from 22 to 24, 25 episodes. So you're looking at 88 to 100 that make it to air. So from 20,000 to 100. Mm -hmm. There's a drop off. How many, do, where's the, yeah, that's what I was asking before. So from 20,000, <laughs> you see 20,000. We see and then, thousands that go through okay. to thousands the following go rounds. Through. Yeah. And then okay. as they make it through, because we do background checks and patent checks and entity searches, we do a ton of vetting on our end because okay. we have to. So if you have like a criminal history that you don't get on the show? It depends. Everything's okay. case depends by case. Depends what you've done. Yeah. Uh, Tia Lupita told us that. Hector said, he's like, I think my... <laughs> They know more about, I think Mindy knows about me more than my wife I knows. saw that yeah. quote the other day and yeah. it made me laugh because I'm like, well, we redo a lot of reading on those applications. How many seasons do you think this the entire show will go? Like, is there shark fatigue? I is, don't know. Viewers love the show. It seems like it's done super well. I don't, streaming hasn't affected it really. No, I think streaming has helped, honestly, yeah. because a lot of people, it's funny because we're in syndication on other networks and 
even when I fly, all of a sudden I'll look at the TV in front of me on my airplane and I'm like, oh, there's Mr. Wonderful. Like, I can't get away from it. Even when I'm flying to go do something for Shark Tank, I'm yeah. seeing the show. But I think the syndication and the streaming, things going viral on TikTok now, like it's opened up a whole different can of worms, which, you know, is a good thing. I hope that the show keeps going for a while, uh, but you just don't know. But, you know, entrepreneurship is certainly only gaining speed. It's not slowing down, especially with everything that's happened in the last year with banks and Silicon Valley and, and everything and just the, you know, the economy. It's similar to when we started the show I was back say, in 2008. 2008. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's like the same exact thing happening all over again. Exactly. So it'll yeah. be very interesting next month when we start filming to see what happens. Yeah. To see if there's a shift from the last couple of years that we've seen in the tank. I mean, during COVID, more LLCs got started than I think at any other time, so probably many more since people, 2008. Yep. Yeah. They and all so there seems quit to be their some, jobs some or cyclical. lost their jobs and they just ventured yeah. out. And the thing that always gets me with TV shows is, for some reason, people want to like spice it up in some way. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the, the Shark Tank they has a formula. You don't yeah. need to spice anything up. It's like you have the spice are the startups, <laughs> the different products, right? And Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> and Mr. Wonderful, wearing red more often. Oh, well, he has his signature suit. And the That's watch, his the thing. watch thing, the red the watch. The watch bands. and the pen. Now he does a, a pen that matches his watch. Oh. I had to do a whole series last year for social about his <laughs> pens and his watch. So every day I'd be like, Kevin, let's do it. The last question I want to ask you is when I, I'm going to apply on Shark Tank, by the way. Oh, okay. We're going to launch a company. Okay. It's called Fatty Balls. <laughs> it's not Dear a God. joke. This it's not a joke? You're getting an exclusive. Like, this is a year, a year Fatty from Fatty Balls. Season 17. Okay, so we got some We're recording time. this. <laughs> this is like me telling you the future. Okay. It's going to be me and a chef. His name is Chef Kuo. Okay. He has little fatty in Mar Vista. I've been. So good. Yeah. And so he's got this meatball that he makes that's like gone viral on all these social media platforms. I've not had that. And so we're going to make this a consumer package good, a CPG company. Ooh. And of after like, by that point, we'll have like 300 episodes of this podcast out. Yep. And so I'm just like learning from all of these individuals. And it's like, we're just going to package that. And we're going to take all the learnings. Mm -hmm. and we're going to start a company. And we think we have the right team, the right socials team, the chef, the whole thing. And then we're going to do it. We're going to go on Shark Tank. I'm oh. going to see you again. You Listen, I look forward to that day. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. It'd be a cool story. Yeah, I mean, you know There's how to, backstory. now you know how to. <laughs> you like to pass the backstory test. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. I do, yes. But I look forward to that, and you know how to find me if you want to fly. I can find you now. Yeah, we can no, also we'll go see. online. We'll see. That's the idea. We'll see what happens. All right. Mindy, thank you. Thank you for helping all these new entrepreneurs get through their process and not enter your DMs. <laughs> the DMs will probably still blow up, but uh, it's, it's a very special show to be part of. Yeah. Like I said, I cast a lot of different shows also, but this one certainly, to be a small part in seeing someone's business and dream really get pushed to another level, it's really special to just kind of see them reach heights that they've never dreamed of. I love so. it. That's cool. Well, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. If you made it this far, I bet you loved the episode. So you should join our YouTube channel membership for only $2.99 a month. This gets you access to one, the whole unabridged conversation. Two, you get the episodes on Monday, one day earlier. Three, you get two additional entries to our giveaways. Check out our Instagram to see what we've given away. And four, you get access to seasons one through three. That's over 100 episodes of wisdom and life-changing advice. What are you waiting for? Join.